Well guys, it's pretty much a roller. What's going on, bro? What's up? Hey, you mind if I use your lathe? It's right there. Hi guys, so that was my buddy Joe. He's been uh, really cool and letting me use his lathe whenever I want. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and set this thing up. So yeah, we gotta turn the shaft down to fit a U-joint. This is gonna be part of our front drive shaft. So yeah, let's get to it. So I got my front drive shaft components machined. This is just gonna press in there and get welded. And then I have a U-joint right here. It's just gonna slide on the other end and get welded as well. So right now I'm actually having problems with the drive shaft hitting that bar right there and also this one. So basically what I have to do is either notch this out or redo these two bars so we have more clearance for our drive shaft. As you can see there, I had to cut off that bend and make clearance for the drive shaft. And I gotta do that same thing with that. So guys, I'm gonna have to address something that's probably gonna be talked a lot in the comments. Since we are building this thing with differentials, the engine cannot point 90 degrees like it is on a snowmobile and has to point longitudinally which means we had to connect it to the drive shaft somehow now I decided to take the hardest possible route the main issue here is just the enormous size of this secondary clutch so you might suggest I could have just offset this thing to the side um, or under the floorboard and have it dangerously close to my feet that's not a good option that's why I chose to put it under where it's protected the one drawback of having this huge pulley down there is we're going to sacrifice our ground clearance. So the solution was I buy a shorter belt and pray that it works. So what I've decided to do is to offset the pulley a little bit and our drive shaft will pretty much miss the pulley. In episode 3 of this build I talked about wanting reverse. So here's what I came up with. This is a fully billet reverse box that I got from overseas. Of course this company did not pay me for advertising so I'm not going to drop a link to it 
you guys will have to find it on your own. Now, since the engine spins the opposite way, this is what our saving grace is going to be. And also, we're going to have reverse, which is going to be very nice for something this heavy. But guys, it's just not, it's just not that simple. This is something that's never been done before. 110 horsepower and this freaking mower. So this thing is insane. It's going to have pretty much has the same wheelbase as my Honda Grom. If you haven't seen that video, you should check it out. I just bought a new Grom. A lot of you guys also suggested I use tractor PTO joints. So that's what I'll be using for this drive shaft. Supposedly they're rated for 60, 70 torque, which is about what I have, but at a very low RPM. So just have to see how they hold up. So yeah, let's go ahead and get to finishing the drive shaft and mounting this billet reverse box. Guys, I know what you see here is quite complicated and some of you might poop on me for like the way I set things up, but it's a freaking tractor. I mean, who cares? Well guys, I think that's gonna be fine. Man, but I can't believe how close these U-joints are to the frame right here. And then the pulley also right here, which uh, pretty close. Taking a break from the drive shaft, I gotta go ahead and cut this body in half. And then I'll have to stretch it like eight inches. I'm gonna try to keep the cut as straight as I can. Okay guys, so I got the rear tail. So uh, we'll mount it somewhere right here. And we gotta go ahead and cut out new slots for the shocks. There isn't one on that side. Well guys, it's pretty much a roller. I'm happy with how this thing is turning out. Man, we come a long way. I think this is episode seven or eight. So, yeah. I got my drive shaft mocked up. I'm gonna go ahead and finalize it in the next video. Um, I'd like to see if any of you guys might have some input or advice that could possibly help me. 
But uh, everything else in the next video should be pretty straightforward. Just connect this sprocket to this one and then connect the CVT to this reverse box. Well guys, I'm gonna have to cut this video a little bit shorter than usual. Ran out of time doing this whole drive shaft. And I'm also working on something cool in the background. So that should be popping up here in a few weeks or days, who knows. So stay tuned for that and peace.